A patient who was diagnosed with an idiopathic epiretinal membrane was posted for a routine vitrectomy with membrane peeling procedure. 25 gaze cannulas were inserted and a wide field contact lens was placed on the cornea. As soon as we saw the fundus, we were momentarily shocked to see spattered blood all over the macular area and inferior fundus. We realize that probably an inadvertent globe perforation has occurred during the peribulbar block given prior to the surgery. We scanned the fundus to locate the extent of damage while doing core vitrectomy. There seemed to be blood over the retinal surface as well as in the subretinal space inferiorly. A small whitish lesion in the inferior temporal periphery seemed to be the entry wound. Posteriorly, we could see the secondary wound inferotemporal to macula within the arcades. The epiretinal blood over the macular region was aspirated with a cutter. Inferiorly, there was a thick subhyloid blood which seemed to have clotted in a thick sheet. It was gradually peeled off using high vacuum with a cutter and aspirated. The posterior pole now looked a bit better than what we had started off with. After this, we switched to a high magnification contact lens to get a better view of the macular area for peeling the pucker. The membrane was peeled using a forceps in a circumferential manner. After that, endolaser was done around the perforation site. The inferior subretinal blood was left alone as it had self-limited itself in that area. The vitreous cavity was left under air.
Post-operatively, the macula looked much better after four days. Residual air bubble is seen superiorly. The OCT looks relatively flat post-ERM removal. So in order to salvage an unexpected disaster like this, one must keep calm and rescue on.